Howdy folks, my name is Terry and today we are doing a 3-in-1 video because I'm going to show you how to paint Rebels three ways easily. If you've never painted a mini before, you're feeling slightly intimidated or hesitant to pick up your paintbrush. I'm hoping this tutorial will show you that it's easy and you can get painting. These tutorials use no more than six or seven bottles of paint or washes, plus a can of bone colored primer. The one I'm using is from Army Painter. Why bone? Because most of the color story of Rebels includes soft whites and fawns, and when you paint on top of bone, you get a little bit of warmth coming through the paint, and you don't need to work up your colors as much. When you're painting minis that wear a lot of tan, it's also a great base coat. So let's get started. We're gonna start with the Hoth Rebel, which I painted using the following paints. P3's Marl White, Crix Base Highlight, a mid-tone gray, a flesh tone, I'm using Idrine Flesh. I made a whole video on this flesh color because it's my favorite one, and painting darker skin tones is a great way to add some visual diversity to your army. Dark tone and soft tone, both from Army Painter. I encourage you to use whatever miniature hobby paints you have. Slimmer tones from different lines exist. Just make sure you use high quality paints made for painting miniatures for the best result. So we're going to start by painting the flesh on the face. You're working from the most recessed areas outwards. It's easier to fix mistakes than to try to shove a brush into those recesses later. Most of the mistakes happen where your brush can most easily reach, meaning it's easy to correct those areas, but it's hardest to reach them. Now we're going to dry brush white on the jacket, hat, and boots, and on the backpack using my favorite dry brush, the e.l.f. contour brush. I've also got a smaller eyeliner brush I picked up from the line for the more fiddly bits, parts where I can't reach behind the gun, as well as on the boots. Now we're going to paint grey on the pants, on the guns, and on the straps, like her belt and backpack. Next we're going to wash the model in soft tone. Make sure you let the wash dry. It's really important before you go on to the next step, which is another wash. Finally, we're going to wash the weapons in dark tone. And that's it. That's Hoth. Let's move on. We're going to do the Scarif tones because it's the one I lean towards uh, for those darker tones. It's the one I'm using for my personal collection as well because I like the contrast the models have. For this, we're going to use Rucksack Tan, a brownish ochre color, Umbral Umber, a dark brown, Crixbane Highlight, that mid-tone gray, Guncore Brown, this mid-tone brown, we're gonna use strong tone and a dark tone from Army Painter. And a flesh I didn't bother putting on camera because you can use whatever flesh you want and you can probably guess what I used. It's Idrian. Step one, paint flesh on the face for the reasons I stated earlier. Next, we're gonna put rucksack tan on the shirt. I'm adding some light brown on the gloves and boots and I'm not afraid to overpaint in the borders of the parts I know I'm gonna paint next. So in this case, that's where the boots meet the pants because quite frankly, the brown paint will cover it up. It's a good tip for beginner painters. It's hard to match up a line paint to paint, but if you overpaint and extend that border, you can come up with the next color and clean up that line and you won't have that weird primer seam along where the paints meet. Now we're gonna put dark brown on the pants, the hat, and the backpack straps. Now we're gonna add on some gray on the guns and backpack and don't hesitate to do a second coat of paint as sometimes the paint does shrink as it dries. Next, we're gonna wash all the medium tones with strong tone and we're gonna make sure we let that dry before going back in and washing all the grays and dark browns with the dark tone. It'll even out my hat issues as you can see there. And that's it. Next up, we'll do the Endor Rebel Trooper. We're going into some Ordic Olive here for this trooper. We're using our mid-tone brown, gun corp brown, Crix Bane highlight, yeah, I am repeating myself, Adrian Flesh, yup, dark tone and strong tone. Step one, paint the face. Yes, I know. Step two, we're gonna stipple green and brown and a little bit of beige if you feel so inclined. We're gonna take that paint, we're gonna thin it out on our palette, we're gonna bring it up onto some paper towel to, to take some of the excess off so we're not blotting globs of paint on, and we're gonna stipple that on. We barely need to graze the model with our brush tips. Additionally, that little bit of water in the paint will help it blend together a little bit better, and so it doesn't have this really strong, hard border on the edges of the paint. I'm not really focusing on letting the paint dry too much as I'm stippling it on, because I do want a little bit of blended tonality in the paint. Next, we're going to paint gray on the weapons, the binoculars, and the bandolier. I'm going to paint brown on the backpack, body, and straps, as well as the boots. Now we're going to put some gray on that hat. And it's optional, but I added a little blue to the goggle strap to kind of pull it out. You can use whatever color you want, including uh, beige or 
a lighter gray tone as well. Now we're gonna put flesh on the hands because you can clean those hands up and chances are if you've stippled along the hands and if you've painted the gray on the gun, you're probably painting onto the hands anyways and this is a great way to clean it up. Now we're gonna put strong tone on most of the model. All the beige, brown, and green surfaces or basically the entire thing. A little bit of wash never hurt anything, especially since the next step is going in with, yes, dark tone, which does darkens up all those wash crevices anyways. Putting it on the gray of the weapons, of the hat, and the accessories. I added in a little bit of extra into the goggle lens as well to darken them up so they would look a little bit different than the rest of the hat. Now, I wasn't exactly happy with how the camel came out after the wash because it kind of muddied all the, the definition of color, so I added a little more on top. Don't be afraid to go over details if you want to clean them up or highlight them. It's just paint, and paint is basically its own whiteout or a liquid paper corrector, whatever the non-trademark term is that won't get me sued. And that's it. Thanks so much for watching. I'll be doing more videos on adding detail like bases and eyes, but quite honestly, these minis are table ready standard with some color on the bases. I bet you can't tell which mini doesn't have eyes when you look at them like this, and this is how we play games. We don't play games where the table is eye level like this. These minis are really beautifully sculpted and makes them really forgiving for newcomers to the hobby to paint. If you have questions, feel free to throw them in the comments below. I read all of them and I respond when I can. The most important thing is that you enjoy Enjoy the process and don't be afraid of paint. You can do it. Thank you so much to my patrons on Patreon for supporting tutorials like this. And if you want to support me, do the YouTube things like liking and subscribing and turning on the notification bell for when updates go off for new videos, as well as hitting that Patreon icon to support more tutorial videos like this. Thanks so much for watching and until next time, I will see you soon.